Hello there, Razzle48 here reacting to the Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle according to the title of this video. It says 2.0 announcement trailer for the Nintendo Switch and PS4. This was supposed to be announced at EVO after Top 8, which should be happening approximately five minutes ago, but it got leaked. Thankfully, I didn't see any spoilers. One dude on Discord changed his username to Kokonoe is coming, so that may or may not be happening. And I also heard that... Um, it was a single singular character pack. I don't know if that is true or not, but for the most part, I'm going into this blind. The, the fact that they're calling it 2.0 is super hype. There's a bunch of likes and no dislikes, so that has me looking looking forward to it in a very uh, fortunate-ish manner. I, I, I just woke up, so I can't think right now, but I'm very, very excited. I had dreams about the, the characters that shouldn't get in getting in, so that's hopefully all going to be put to rest soon so i know without further ado let, let's let's react to this let's do it our system works gonna turn down the volume a tad bit if i hear Celica's free theme i'm gonna freak out oh my god it, it's doing the thing <laughs> Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. The next. Is this a sequel? I'd be fine with that. Version 2.0. The next character introductions. Plural. All right. So light blue. I, I'm assuming that's Sin Kagura. Yes, that is. Oh my, look at this hut. It's beautiful. It's Yumi. Um, I believe someone on Twitter leaked Yumi. Character looks effing sick. Um, I, I did think Sin Kagura was going to get in. What uh, um. What else we got? We got gray? That's uh, a Kotsky's nonsense, right? Yeah, 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 that's, that's what it is. So, I didn't play a Kotsky much in under- What the F? What the F? What in the F? What? This was the meme! What the F? This is dumb! This is effing dumb! What else you got? Oh, we got six more? Are they announcing them now? No, no, they're not announcing them now. There's 30 seconds left in this trailer. What is the next 30 seconds? Yes! The best Ruby character! I finally have a Ruby character! This trailer is godlike. We made it there, boys. Best character. Nine new characters on November 21st. That is not a bad release day. How, how long is that from now? That is, uh, I cannot count at present. Um, that is three months away. It's not a bad release date at all. I do believe this got leaked on Twitter. Um, everything except for um blitz tank that one hit me in the face that one i was not emotionally prepared for that but um i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to everyone on discord about this i'm gonna cut off the recording now and i'll come back later and analyze it frame by frame and I am back, so the lighting in my room right now is really, really bad, and it's actually been a few days since uh, since the announcement happened. I, I actually got really caught up in my Discord discussion, and I never actually got around to breaking down the trailer, which is why um, it didn't go up the day of, or the day after, or anything like that. But... I'm getting around to it now, which um, is a good thing for a couple of points, which we'll get to here in a bit, concerning uh, this content update, um, this uh, BB tag patch that's coming and whatnot. But um, before we get uh, into that any, let's go ahead and uh, analyze the trailer here. So, we got the Arc System Works logo that comes up. Nothing, nothing much to explain there. Now, uh, the first thing new that we see is right here. Um... We see that Ragna and Naoto are going to be having an intro in the game. Now, um, as uh, most people know, the last character pack, character pack 7, Naoto, Seth, Hart, 
um, and Teddy. They didn't have any intros with uh, anyone in the cast. This is because um, they were not part of the initial plan for uh, DLC inclusion. They weren't part of the originally planned 40, which means that uh, when they got the voice actors to come in and dub their lines, um, all of the rest of the cast voice actors ha were already done with everything, and uh, they weren't going to call everyone back just to do, like two or three lines per voice actor to get an interaction with a new character pack. But, um, now that, um, as we see, there's going to be at least nine new characters coming, uh, in the future, they have called everyone back, so we're gonna get new intros with character pack 7, as well as, uh, with all of the brand new characters coming in 2.0 and onwards. So that is really great to know that we'll be getting uh, character intros. That's something great to look forward to. Um, this was also officially stated on um, by Arc System Works themselves on their website um, and on the BB Tag official Japanese website as well. So we may, it's possible that we may also um, have to look forward to intros between members of the rest of the cast, the original 40, who didn't have intros before. For example, my team, Jin Yukiko, doesn't have an intro. They may have an intro after 2.0. Um, um, they are going to be adding new intros. So that is really cool. That's a great thing to look forward to. I know that bits of fan service like this are... Um, it's just little details like that that cause a lot of people uh, to want to play the game, and um, that's that's why they, they they think that the game is a good game. It's just little bits of fan service like that, cross series interactions or whatnot. Anyway, um, character update uh, 2.0. I think, uh, like I said in my reaction, the fact that they're calling it 2.0 is a big deal. Um, it wasn't 2.0 when they added the 9 from last EVO. It wasn't 2.0 when they added Franchise 5, Arcana Heart. This is 2.0, which means that um, they understand that um, this is the biggest transition that BB Tag has gone through since its update. And uh, we'll get into that here in a bit, too. It's a bit more than just the characters, but... Um uh, we, we, we will talk about, um, things as they come. So, Simran Kagura, I have not played this game. Um, I said in my reaction, I didn't think Simran Kagura was coming. That was just in the heat of the moment, and because i just woken up. I knew Simran Kagura was coming. I covered this. Uh, what I meant was, I did not think Simran Kagura was going to be Franchise 6. I, um, when I first saw the reveal... Uh, Hearts reveal, and I saw that there was a sixth franchise coming. Initially, I believe in my reaction, I did say that I thought it was going to be Simran Kagura, and um, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought Persona 4 Arena only has one character left to include besides Shadow Labras, who won't get in for multiple reasons, but um, theoretically, if they put Elizabeth in this trailer, then Persona would be out of uh, characters to reveal, and if it was like trailer for Character Pack 7, where they revealed the last franchise at the end of it, then that would be a perfect time Elizabeth would have been revealed, all of the characters from the original P4A minus Shadow Labyrinth would have been revealed, that would have been a perfect time to announce an upgrade to Ultimax, and once I considered that possibility, that was kind of what solidified in my mind as what the sixth franchise was for sure going to be. I have heard multiple times that Mori originally planned to include a total of nine franchises in the game, and I think to this day that is what they're going for. Two more franchises will complete the diamond, which is kind of like the symbol they've been going for with the whole game up until this point, but the point I'm trying to make is, uh, I thought Simran Kagura was going to be in for sure, but I thought it was going to be later. I didn't think it was going to be Franchise 6, but it's Franchise 6, and uh, judging from how they handled this, if they upgrade to Ultimax, which we'll, which we'll also talk about here in a bit, um, it won't be one of the last two franchises. It'll just be like a strict upgrade of the original P4A. But anyway, Simran Kagura, I have not played this game. I've not played any of these games. I actually just got the one that's being represented here, Festival Versus, in the mail today. So, um, I'm gonna play that, see what that's all about. But in any case... So, uh, this is Yumi. Uh, so the first thing we see here, the first thing I saw here, like, before I saw Yumi, before I saw this stage... <coughs> before I saw any of that... For some reason, I noticed the HUD first, because this HUD looks so good. Like, um, 
you uh you get you see the characters here it, you see backgrounds that are color coordinated with their franchises you see as they slightly uh fade to transparent here i just think that this looks so beautiful and 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 they change the timer again it's like every time the game gets new characters the game gets an update the like all of the visuals get uh, like for the hud get revamped it's it's just a constant reminder um a constant visual reminder that the game is constantly being upgraded that we're getting more and more each update and i think it's great it's one of the um things that keeps this game feeling like it's constantly evolving that it's not stagnant i don't think i've ever seen this in a blaze blue game before where with every update with uh, like every new character or set of characters comes a a new hood usually this is a thing reserved exclusively for new entries in the franchise so i thought that was real cool but enough of the hud y'all 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 clearly know by this point that i think that it looks great so uh, so before I talk about Yumi, uh, I gotta talk about this stage. The stage looks amazing. I love the reflection effects. Um, I think that, yeah, this is, this will probably be my new favorite stage in the game. Hearts was my favorite stage in the game up to this point. Um, may maybe it was just because of how, uh, of it being new and whatnot. But I think this stage is the best looking stage in the game by far at this point. I'm definitely gonna set this to my default stage from now on. Um... Yumi, uh, she looks great. She moves great. Um, her her, her tits, like the, that's the thing about Simran Kagura is the tits and whatnot. Her tits don't actually look that big in gameplay. Um, and she's she's not as much of a fan service character in this adaptation as I uh, as I would have thought they made of her. Like she's definitely not a lychee, if you know what I mean. But um, anyway, everything about uh, this character looks uh, very very sick. Um, this looks like uh this looks like a normal of sorts right here. Um. This move, uh, well, actually, she was doing something beforehand because her back was to the camera. So I think that this is the follow up attack. This is like part of an auto combo. It's part of her A string, maybe part of her B string. Um, uh, this uppercut, probably the same thing, unless this is 5B and that previous attack was a continuation of her 5A auto combo. Uh, that may be uh, 5AA and this may be 5B, for example, because it's an upward swing. Uh, she may be one of those characters like Ragna or Weiss, who has an anti-air as her 5B. Um, uh, this... This doesn't look like a special to me. It might be, but it looks like it's part of an auto combo. I don't think a move that's... Uh, I don't know. This this uh, move here, this um, swirly, icy thing move, it looks like it'd be very unsafe if you did... Th this right here. It looks like it'd be very, very unsafe if you did it raw. So I think that this may be part of an auto combo as well. Uh, this this may be a special, this, um, this tornado-ish thing here that, uh, that launches her. Um, I don't think that's the end of an auto combo. I don't know. It might be. That may just be 5AA and a 5BBB, uh, for all I know. Uh, but I don't think so. I think that that wa was a special that launched. She's posing. It's like, um, posing? Posing, if you will. Uh, and, and they have the ice effects, which looks cool. I always like ice characters. I'm main gen. Um, I think that they have, like, some of the coolest effects in games like this. Um... Uh, I, I don't think Mitsuru Weiss personally lived up to uh, how cool Jin was. Yumi definitely looked like she might. Um, this looks like it could be a special. This um, it sort of looks like a, a variation of like a ice ice um, icicles, if you will, that comes out of the ground. Jin used to do this with uh, his old 2D back in uh, old Blaze Blues, but um, this looks like a different version. It erupts in front of her, and there's multiple ones. Looks real cool. This could be a special. Um. I don't know what this was. If you look real close here, I actually have not noticed this before. Um, this right here, this um, circle, this pink, this uh, the, not the, not pink, this green circle thing. It looks like a kind of rapid cancel to me. But I look at her meter and it doesn't go down. And she didn't use assist meter either, obviously, because there was no assist involved. So I don't know what this is. This may be a Yumi specific mechanic. Like I like I said, I don't know anything about Yumi. I don't know anything about Saren Kagura. Um, so this may be a Yumi specific mechanic where she's able to cancel stuff, fly at people. Actually, this is looking pretty Yumi specific. I don't think any other character could fly at people like this besides, you know, heart. But that's a individual mechanic um this kind of looks like a command throw uh, in a way where she grabs her and then she like dives on her like this 
It could be an air normal into an air special where she hit her with JA or JB or something and this dive may be uh, J214 something or J236 something. Um, it's possible. I personally think it's a, it's a Yumi specific thing. She did a special uh, cancel of sorts into either a command grab or uh, air normal into air special. Uh, she definitely looks real sick. Here we see her do it again. Uh, active switching. Uh, we see going on here, um, we see that the words here, it's a different font, there's a different effect behind it, it looks a lot cooler, it looks a lot more, uh, I don't know if action packed is the correct phrase, a lot more dynamic perhaps than it is right now with, um, just, uh, the words that happen right now, they look a lot more normal, I guess, it's not as, a not as hype as, uh, this visual effect right here is, this change, uh, this is Yumi's change animation, she looks right at the camera, uh, looks pretty cool, and then uh, we see her do this. This, um, this is clearly, uh, th this is, uh, uh, well, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> like, um, that may be 5B, and uh, what I was talking about earlier with the anti air may just be part of an auto combo after all, and this is 5B. And uh, this is her 5B auto combo into super. We know that that's not a special because you can't special into super. Um, so yeah, her super looks real cool. That's Loom, Loomy, Yumi. And she does look real cool. Tits look big there. Not so big in game though. Um, then we got Akatsuki Blitz Comp. Oh boy. So I didn't care at all about this franchise, and and I still don't really. So um, Akatsuki. I know Akatsuki. I know Akatsuki from Undernight, and um, that's that's about all I know. I, I I know the bare basics of his game. I know it's like some. German World War Two ish thing. Akatsuki may or may not have been a spy. I played through his arcade mode in Undernight, but I don't really remember it. I know he like um, awoke a long time after the war, but uh, I don't mind Akatsuki. Um, to me, as a player, this feels like a guest character from Undernight, which I'm perfectly fine with. Like I said, I don't care for his origin franchise, but I don't care that I don't care for his origin franchise, if that makes sense. Because, uh, to me, personally, he just feels like a guest character from Undernight. And, uh, that's real cool, even if I think that, uh, in Undernight, he was a really basic, bare, bland character. Uh, I said this in my character discussion video, the hour long and a half thing, which I may make a video about uh, how my thoughts on that kind of thing has changed, what I got right and wrong in the future. But, for Akatsuki specifically, um, I like him in this game a lot more than I thought I would, because if you see his um, his visual effects here, like this explosion, for example, like these lightning effects, for example, it looks a lot cooler than it looked like in Undernight, to me personally. And um, that just equates to like a cooler character to watch, a hyper character to watch. He, he seems hyper in the trailer. He'll probably seem hyper when I'm spectating matches. He won't He won't seem cooler when I'm getting bodied by him, like that, that's for sure. But I know about these uh, Rekka looking, uh, Rekka type moves he has here with his uh, transition of aerial kicks. Um, they, they remind me a lot of, uh, Hyde's Rekkas, and, uh, I don't know what this is, um, this super he does where he charges and gets hit before, um, attacking new. It reminds me in a way of Elizabeth's instant kill from Persona, where it's an instant kill that had to be activated, but it was essentially a counter, but you had to hit her three times for it to activate. So I don't know if that's what this is, or if it's just an armored super that he held down and... Like, maybe if you get hit, then um, it extends your damage the more uh, moves your armor through with it. Or it uh, extends the range that you launch yourself forward after he does, um, after, uh, like, uh, maybe the more he gets hit, the farther he'll go right here, uh, for example. I don't know. This probably already has a resolute answer, but I don't know much about Akatsuki in Undernight other than just like viewing him on the surface as a character and what he looks like to play as, and I definitely don't know the first thing about him in his origin game. So, if you know anything about Akatsuki and how these mechanics may function, please tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Um, welcoming him to BB Tag, just like, uh, just like everyone else. Um, I ranked Akatsuki low. Uh, I, I kind of discussed this already, but I did rank Akatsuki low on my list of uh, characters I wanted in, but um, I definitely am more welcoming to him now 
than I thought I would be viewing him from the perspective that I am with how they've handled this specific trailer and how it looks like they're going to be handling stuff going forward. Now this, I freaked out about this. So, um, like I said in my reaction, it was leaked on Twitter that we were getting Yumi, Akatsuki, and Neo. And I, I thought about it, and I thought that that was very believable, given the information that we knew uh, right, uh, like the day before I saw this trailer. Um, and uh, once I saw Yumi, um, and then uh, I was like, oh, um, it's very possible that that leak was true. And then I saw Kotsky, and then I was like, oh, the leak was definitely true. We'll see Neo at the end of the trailer, which is why I did not freak as out as much in my reaction as I would have if I was not told about it in some form prior but this caught me completely by surprise now I do know about the data mines voice files for the announcer um, for the announcer uh, basically if you don't know what that is um, in the previous BB tag patch someone data mines uh, announcer files you know the character who announces the characters names on the character select screen the, the sort of files that I covered in my previous video about Asuka and Yumi when I'm like these characters are coming to BB tag this franchise is coming to BB tag but um, in the previous um, patch they data mined files for all the remaining Blaze Blue characters all the remaining arena and ultimix characters all the remaining undernight latest characters like half of the arcana heart cast like it like 10 or 11 ruby characters akatsuki and like 10 characters from his game as well as asuka and yumi in addition to another 10 or something characters from um Siren Kagura. And because of this, we did hear about Blitz Tank, and this is how the Blitz Tank meme came to be, and I joked about it, but I didn't possibly think that Blitz Tank would get in the game. I was always under the assumption, and still am, that those voice files were recorded for the sake of uh, not having to call the announcer back for whatever they plan to do in the future. Basically, they recorded them for the purpose of having them in case they want to add whoever they want in the future, which is obviously a good thing when you uh, see a producer of a game doing something like this, because that means that when they do something like that, when they're preparing like that, um, e that means that they are planning to provide a lot of content for us in the future if they're making preparations on that scale. Now, unlike some, I definitely don't think that all of those characters are coming. I think that that was, like I said, just preparation so that they can pick and choose who they want to include with relative ease in the future. But Blitz Tank was probably the character out of all of the ones leaked that I thought was the absolute least likely to happen. So you better believe I freaked out when I saw this crap. And let me tell you, I have no idea how this character is going to work. We see footage here. I get nothing from this. I don't understand a darn thing. So he's shooting here. I don't know how this character is going to work. Like, is this his normals? Is he going to lift up his treads and sock you in the mouth with it? I, I, I just don't know. Like, he looks so, like, like, look at this thing. He looks so silly. Um, I read up on the lore of this character. It, it, it turns out it was a dude who became a mech, who, uh, who became a tank. He forgot how to think and think coherently, and then he started to remember again. And I'm like, that's crazy. We got, like, potential World War II Wolfenstein-type tanks fighting iron tiger that's crazy anyway uh this so this may be his just a 5a for example for example i i, I want to see this thing move we don't see him move in this trailer i think that'll be crazy but um this may be a normal for all i know this explosion may be the end of an auto combo those bullets may just be his 5a and this is how the auto combo ends um, I think that's the most likely. We see the flamethrower here. This may be a special. This may be 5B. I don't have to know. He headbutts you here. That could either be sweep or it could be anti-air. It moved him forward a bit. So uh, let me, let's, let's see what he looks like when he moves forward like that. It, it looks kind of silly. It looks like he's about to yeet. And, and then he does. So that may be like a sweep because like his head like uh, was going for their crotch. So he may be sweeping there. That may be an anti-air of sorts that just has a sort of forward propulsion on it. And uh, then we just see him super. So we don't see much of this character. So I don't know what to think of this. I don't know. I have no idea. 
like Kotsky blitz tonk player. I'm not. I'm not ever gonna play the game. By the way, it's like a PC fighting game. I have no interest in playing it. Um, so I'm definitely not going to learn anything about any of these characters until they get put in BB tag. But if you have played the game and would like to educate my dumb butt about how this effing tank functions in a one v one fighting game like situation, feel free to tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear about that crap. So, uh, this looks like standard laser super. Reminds me of a Koken Noe's giant Tager laser super from CF. And then we see that Akatsuki and Blitz Tank are now on the way. It baffles me that of all the characters they chose to accompany Akatsuki from his home game, they choose this effing thing. Maybe it's a strategical move because they think that this kind of crazy nonsense will like bring more people into the game. And I think that's honestly a very fair point. Um, if you look at character pack 7, Teddy, Naoto, Seth, I think that of the franchises, of the uh, original three fighting game franchises, those characters had the largest player bases that were not currently already in BB Tag. So I think those were very wise choices. I think after character pack 6, um, Arc System Works wised up a lot and have thought a lot more about who they include. Um, and I think that Character Pack 7 is a great reflection of that. And I think that this effing thing may also be a reflection of that. So Akatsuki, Blitz Tank are coming. That's Franchise 8. And then uh, we see some stuff here. Um, we see uh, Active Partner. Um, this Active Partner text is... Um, is in the old font, unlike the uh, the change logo text that I pointed out earlier. You see the active partner text here. That's the same as it is now. Um, this is a new move. Um, at least for BB Tag, I am. Uh, I've, I've played my fair share of Jubei, haven't seen him done this crap, at least in BB Tag. Maybe he did in CF. That was a long, long time ago. I don't really, like, remember CF. I've been away from CF ever since BB Tag came out. So, this looks like a new move, which means that characters may very well just be getting new moves that they didn't have access to before. I can't remember, um, I can't remember anyone off the top of my head who is missing a special or something that's absolutely like critical to their move pool who they were missing coming into BB Tag. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I just, uh, can't, can't, can't remember any of them, but Jubei does appear to have a new move here, so it seems that characters may be getting upgrades to their move sets, which is uh which is a super hype. Um that uh the characters that we uh that are already in the game may be altered on such a way as to be getting new moves to their move set. We may get some assist changes just like we did with the last large balance patch. And uh they did uh make an official statement saying that there would be huge balance changes coming to the current cast in 2.0. Understandably so we expected it, but just thought I would clarify that that is confirmed. So we see Akatsuki doing a super here. I don't know what that says. Um <laughs> Those Japanese words. But this is very interesting. So, here we see S doing an auto combo. Her assist meter goes to zero. Yosuke comes in. This is a gold burst. I'm going to talk about this for anyone who may not be familiar with the concept. But, if you played the Persona Arena line, or you played the older Blaze Blue lines, you know all about this. So, what a Blaze, uh, a Blaze Blue burst, not a Blaze Blue burst, what a gold burst is, is basically a burst when you're not under pressure. Um, you can burst uh, t basically as a combo extension or as a very fast combo starter. Like if you think they're going to run up, you can gold burst them and it'll be a combo start. I don't know if you can do it raw in this game like that, but uh, how it's utilized here is S is doing a combo and she gold burst. Yosuke comes in. Yosuke does damage. We notice that the gold burst attack um, does do uh, how much damage here? 500 damage. And uh, basically, the concept of Gold Burst is you can Gold Burst, and then you can continue to attack. So it's used as a kind of combo extender, not unlike a Rapid Cancel. Think of like a Rapid Cancel, but if it had its own hitbox. So, S finishes her auto combo, Gold Burst, Yosuke comes in, hits, and from this point, we don't see beyond this point, but Yosuke would then be able to continue the combo from that point, as if he was the active character, because gold bursting lets you act again instantaneously, almost. A lot like, um, 
a lot like rapid cancels do. So this will open up a lot of sick uh, higher ceiling combo routes. Um, a lot of stylish combo routes. Usually this sort of thing isn't that optimal. It's more just to style. But if you need to kill them, then a lot, a lot of times gold bursting can, can, can give you that extenuation to your combo you need. Uh, in this game, um, obviously it takes all your assist meter, which recharges about every 10 seconds if you burst. It does recharge slower if you burst than if you use it through other means. So I don't know if that'll still be the case for gold bursting or not, or if it's like halfway between the two, but whatever. Um, so you'll be using your assist meter for this combo extension, but it's uh, I personally think it's a lot cooler here than it was in Persona 4 Arena, or than it was in um, uh, the old Blaze Blue games, uh, before CP, I believe, because... Um, because here, if you gold burst, that means you'll be able to transition from one character's combo routes to that of another. And I think that that's really cool. It's like cross comboing, but just, but without like, uh, the limitation of only being able to use your three assists. You'll be able to combo with a character, uh, gold burst into another character, and then do, uh, some sick combo routes with, uh, with them. Obviously, you won't be able to do cross combo in this situation because, um, Gold bursting takes up all of your assist meter, just like normal bursting does. But uh, I think that's real cool. Also, one last comment on the matter. I do want to re remember, or, uh, or at least bring the attention to the fact that in the Persona 4 Arena games, if you landed a gold burst raw outside of a combo, like you just burst a neutral and it hit them, it instantly gives you max meter. So obviously in this trailer, all we see is gold bursting within a combo. We don't know if you're going to be able to gold burst in neutral at all in BB Tag, but if uh, if they do, you may be able to gold burst in neutral like in Persona and Old Blaze Blues, and like in Persona as well, you may, if you land a gold burst in neutral, get max meter off of it. So those are some very interesting things and exciting things to keep in mind for how this mechanic may work um, in the two. 2.0 patch. So I think that that's uh, real, real cool. Um, here's the next thing we see uh, that's brand new here. This is a this is a visual effect for uh, 5C for uh, Clash Assaults to help you time the uh, the marvelous that uh, that you get. Um, visually, there's not much to talk about here, but visually, I think it looks really cool. And I think that uh, this is also just a great thing to add just in general because it's not really clear in BB Tag as it is now when exactly you're supposed to press the button to get the correct timing. It's something you kind of just have to learn through trial and error. There is no in-game indication for um, the correct timing. You just have to figure it out. So this, not only does it look cool, it'll help with that and give more of a clear um, indication as to what exactly you're supposed to do for the game to mark your timing as correct, basically. So I think that's cool. Um, we're getting nine characters. I will talk about the nine characters in a separate video if I decide to do one. I've kind of been absent from YouTube just from pure laziness and just that I haven't had the passion for it. But I would love to do a video on uh, the remaining characters. Um, but uh, let's talk about Neo. So I already talked about why I wasn't 100% surprised about Neo, but I am very excited about this character. I don't like Ruby in general. Um, and, uh, I don't like ba basically any of the Ruby characters in the game right now. I thought Weiss was all right, but, but, but for the most part, I hate all of them. Uh, and, uh, and I really don't like the series either. I can count the number of characters that I like in the series on one hand. And Neopolitan is the only character that I love. And I'm so happy that they chose this character. I don't, I don't think it really makes sense. I think Roman would have made more sense. Maybe they chose Neo for fan popularity. But, um, which, which I mentioned in my, in my past video. Um, I did think that was a possibility, but, uh, I'm just so happy just personally that they added this character. This is the only Ruby character that I really love, that I'm really passionate. I mean, Crow and Roman are cool, but I love Neo. Um, I finally have a Ruby character that I personally care about. I finally have a reason to not despise Ruby being in the game anymore after just like all the nightmares Ruby and Yang have put me through. So this will be my Ruby character. This will be the character I play from the franchise. Let's analyze her. So this 
is obviously a, a, a teleport, but it looks to be a counter, a counter teleport. It reminds me a bit of Greninja in Smash, how he, uh, how he does the thing, um, how he does this, like, pose here, where she, she, she's, like, leaning in here, and, uh, she teleports, uh, behind Ruby here. And, um, so basically it's a call-out move, but unlike Greninja, as uh, the example I made, she, um, she can attack with whatever normal she wants after this. Looks like a 5A, for example. And, uh, I think this is really cool for a number of reasons. For one, it's not just, like, a counter DP, like Hakuben's or, like, Chie's, where you just get two, like, a 1.5 to 2K off of it, and that's it for guessing correctly. Um... Uh, you're, a, you're able to get a full combo off of the read if you read it successfully, or at least that's what it looks like here, which now that I'm talking about it, makes Hakuman and Chie seem kind of low tier by comparison. But um, anyway, Neo can do that. Also, I want to point out that in this particular example we see here, Ruby is doing 5B. This is significant because we knew, we we knew, we know Ruby's 5B is huge and has a hitbox behind her, which means that you, um, uh, this, this move would still be an active. So, uh, Neo just doesn't get hit, or, may, or maybe, like, her getting hit took up, it's like, um, it's one hint counter on her. I don't really know how the mechanic works specifically, but um, if they're doing a move with a backwards hitbox that triggers the counter, you won't just teleport behind them and get hit by the move. That may be a game mechanics theme that I don't know because I just I, I haven't programmed the game myself, but uh, I just thought that that was uh, definitely worth pointing out. I, I love this character. I think she looks so sick. Like the fact that um, she, she smacks you with an umbrella um, these kicks, these overhead kicks remind me of Weiss's auto combo, but it looks like she does them twice here, once there, and it looks like she's about to do it again. I think that this just looks so cool. Now, let's examine this 5A. If this is her 5A, that is about the range that you can expect. Like, um, it looks, uh, like about the hitbox of Jin's. 5A, for example, um, it looks like it may be a tad faster. We'll have to wait and see. I'm, in general, pretty bad at guessing um, frame like frame data on a move just by looking at it. But uh, this looks like a, an A auto combo, like simple an A auto combo. These are her air normals. Her air normals look really good. So um, this one here. The first one she does, which may, which uh, may be JA, it reminds me of, um, dang, what the, it reminds me of Tager's JC hitbox. Well, obviously not as big because Neo is not Tager sized, but this general sweep that she does under her is, uh, I, it's like S's. That's what it's like. And S's is really, really good because she can just air dash over you and do this for no, for no reason. I mean, obviously she likes to do the circle thing more, but that's besides the point. Um, she, you, this may be a tool that you can air dash over people and smack them and get a combo. So Neo may have IAD cross up tech. That's real good to know. This thing also looks like it has a decent hitbox. So this may be a good air to air. I don't know so much about that. This looks more like an air to ground tool than a, than something you'd want to use as an air-to-air. -air. And um, then she does this here where she smacks down with her umbrella. Now, usually with moves that have animations like this, I'm used to them knocking uh, the the opposing character down to an extent. So the fact that it doesn't hear makes, uh, makes me think that this is JAA, like um, most characters have... Um, uh, a JAA string where it's like they can press A again. Uh, it's just your JAA auto combo. You show, most characters are two hits. I think that's what it could be. Then we have this uh, down kick here, uh, which was followed by a teleport. I think this will be... I think this is either JC, and it's just an aerial dive kick that uh, may teleport on hit. I It may teleport on block two. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't know. It may, but on hit for sure. Or it's a it's a it's an aerial special sort of like how um how the counter uh, how the landed counter is a teleport um when it's triggered as well. So then uh she does um the same move twice. 
which is uh which is very significant because we see her jump here we see her do this she does this then she teleports does j jumps does it again which means that this teleport that she has off of her JC or that special or whatever that dive kick was, if she teleports, it will reset her jump count. Wait, 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 wait. No, I'm just stupid because she jumped initially, she teleported, and uh, this would be her second jump. So ignore me, I'm just stupid, but the fact that she can do um, JA, teleport, JA, jump, JA again, I think that that's sick. And then we have uh, this kick here. Actually, this looks like... It's part of the J uh, A auto combo. So I think that that downwards hit was more likely to be uh, JB or something. I don't know. If this is JB and she has air to airs with this hitbox and you can just do this raw, that's insane. Um, other characters that have uh, aerial kicks like this, like, um, like, uh, dang, what's a good one? Like, generally, uh, aerial kicks like this tend to have hitboxes behind them as well. So this could just be a jump over somebody and press this button and it'll land from behind, even though she's not facing towards them. Uh, this could potentially work as, uh, as well. And then, and then we see her, um, and then we see her do this, which could, um, which, uh, makes me think that that, that button... Uh, that forward kick that I was just talking about was like JB because this would then be a uh, JBB the follow-up and then we just see her super we see Roman's hat which makes me think Roman isn't coming that's all there is to say about that I now that Neo's in the game I don't think that Roman is nearly as likely as I thought he was beforehand but um yeah that's Neo um, these characters were all becoming November 21st, as we see here. Um, I'm pretty sure that the website confirms that the other five will also be coming, uh, November 21st. And this is kind of why I'm glad I waited a few days to do this analysis. Because we also got some news, like, uh, today, that the Arknama stream for both this month and next month will be covering uh, news on the new content coming to BB Tag in November, which means this month and next month we're getting news. I don't think that this is merely gameplay. They wouldn't showcase it in the way that they're looking like they will if it was just gameplay. And the fact that they've hinted towards the fact that these five other unrevealed characters are coming in the same pack in November makes me think that that... um revealing them uh one in maybe one to two weeks and then one uh next month at about the same time or one month from this month's arc nama stream uh it makes a lot of sense for the pacing that they'd get them out um get them all revealed a couple months before this huge content pack drops so it's very possible we may be getting some more news here in as short as a week or two and then some more again next month um so that's super exciting uh this I'm, uh, and I do just want to take a moment to talk about the soundtrack, uh, because, um, we hear a new song here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Yumi's theme. I heard someone say it may be a remix of Yumi's theme. It may also be an arcade trailer. Blaze Blue has done musical pieces for arcade trailers for basically every game in the franchise, um, except for BB Tag, um, that has not been a music piece that's selectable in the main game. BB Tag's trailer music became its main theme, so it is selectable. So, this may be an arcade piece, this may just be, uh, Yumi's song, uh, Yumi's song remix, but I'm looking forward to the fact that, uh, we're getting new characters, new franchises, new music, and, um, I will talk about, um, the nine new characters as well as my thoughts on like um the cast as it's developed now how my thoughts have changed what i was right and wrong about and whatnot in a future video potentially but for now all i can say is i'm super hyped about this there was nothing in here that made me upset like i said i'm not too hyped for akatsuki as a franchise but i think these characters are great picks like i said to me this is just an undernight rip and this is a dank meme i think it's a real dank meme i like it and um hi i'm hyped to jump into sk i think this character looks cool and this is my indisputably favorite favorite ruby character so that's great i haven't made bb tag stuff in a uh, in a long long time i've been away from youtube in general so it would be pretty exciting for me to hop in so uh november 21st get your fight sticks prepared and everything mine's broken actually i i, I need to fix it and um 
yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. So for now, this is uh, Razzle48 saying goodbye, and I will see you next time.